Welcome everybody into the North Georgia High School Kickoff Show. I'm your host, Tim Tao, alongside Team FYN Sports Director, Jake West. Jake, no more padded camps, no more seven-on-sevens. Uh, it's here. It's here. I'm excited. I know you are as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We've been waiting on August 19th for a long time. Uh, I think, man, seven-on-sevens, padded camps and all that, they're really fun when you finally get to them. But then when you finally get to them, and, and I don't know about you, but last last week, the scrimmages, I mean, that was just a, just a little taste to get you really fired up for what's to come. Yeah, it was, man. We, we, we've got a great show on tap for today, uh, and this will be our weekly show airing in the 8 o'clock hour on Team FYN Sports, FYNTV.com, uh, Facebook and Twitter for Team FYN. Uh, Jake, you want to talk a little bit also what, what we've got going on on the North Carolina and Tennessee side of things as well? Yeah, so we're going to have a, a shows every Thursday starting at 6 with uh, uh, Southeast Tennessee show. And then at 7, we're going to have a Western North Carolina show. And obviously, 8 o'clock uh, Thursday nights right now, we're going to have the North Georgia High School kickoff show. Um, so... Uh, if you're a football fan in general, not just of uh, Georgia high school football, then I encourage you to uh, tune in to those. Uh, Jeff Cates going to be hosting the Tennessee one. Uh, myself and Brandon Stevens are going to host the North Carolina one. So it should be a lot of uh, a lot of fun football. We'll have highlights and, and, and everything. We'll have interviews with coaches and players each week. Uh, so we'll have a lot to talk about week in and week out. Yeah, and, and we got a lot to talk about tonight. I mean, a jam-packed, a jam-packed week one uh, slate. Uh, we've got some great guests lined up on the show. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, technology can happen. We may not have somebody join us, but as of right now, uh, we've got uh, a special guest joining us here in just a, just a few moments. And we're going to uh, – I'm, I'm going to kind of hold that as a surprise as he is a familiar face uh, to the uh, Team FYN Sports uh, shows. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Drew Harris, who's the voice of White County Warriors, uh, to talk about North Hall and White County. Um, and we're also going to talk about Raven Harrelson. Uh, Seth Kane with Gratic Sports is on the call uh, for that game, and he's going to join us. And uh, it's going to be a great segment with Seth Kane uh, talking Raven Harrelson. Uh, we'll talk Chris Napier with Team FY and Sports. I mean, obviously, you know, he's, he's no stranger to us. Uh, he's going to be at North Murray and Dalton. Uh, that's the first time ever that game is being played, and that's going to be a fun, uh, fun game. A lot of people saying North Murray could pull the upset, so we'll see. Um, RJ Casey with Team FY and Sports is join, going to join us. Uh, talk about Pickens and Snorville and uh, Trine and Gordon Lee. We hope to get a segment about that. That's one of the oldest rivalries in GHSA. Our good friend Paul Cavan will join us in that. So, uh, Jake, an action-packed show. Uh, a lot of big games this week. Yeah, yeah, there is, and uh, we, we have a lot of guests. We wanted to do this first one uh, upright for everybody that was watching and make sure you didn't just have to listen to uh, Tim and I just talk as floating heads. So we're going to have some guys that are a lot more knowledgeable than you and I come on and talk about some high school football. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I'm excited. A, a game, you know, uh, that's that uh, we, we, we're not going to go in depth on this show, but I do want to talk about it a little bit. Cedartown Rockmart, I think that's a huge game, especially in Northwest Georgia. I think Rockmart can pull the upset. Uh, I really do. I do too. I think Rockmart, and obviously we're going to talk more in depth about the other games you mentioned, but uh, just here for now, I think uh, Rockmart. Win that game by two scores. That would be that's that's gonna be my prediction. Rockmore by fourteen. And Jake, re real quick, I know we're we're uh, we're coming up on our uh, a lot of time here for a segment here, but I want to give two shout outs to two teams who are very familiar with the Team F line coverage area. I feel like these two teams are definitely on the rise, but they've also had a very good spring, great summer workouts, and I'm talking about the Gilmer County Bobcats and Lumpkin County Indians. Uh, Gilmer yep. County. Uh, had a great scrimmage last uh, two weeks ago against Commerce. Uh, Commerce, one of the most storied programs in all of GHSA. They've had a lot of success over the years. Uh, they took down Commerce in a scrimmage. And, and Lumpkin County, man, they're doing a lot of great things. 
Um, you know, I, I'm very excited for those communities because those communities love football. They love their they love their schools, and I think Paul Standard at, at Gilmer and Heath Webb at Lumpkin have got those programs on the rise. I know this ain't going to be the first time we talk about both those schools this year. Yeah, definitely. That's what I was going to say. Is it's amazing what the right person at the helm can do uh, for a program. I mean, Coach Paul Standard at Gilmer, he's got the whole community back involved. Um, everybody in LJ is fired up about Bobcat football, and it's it's been a while since you've been able to truthfully say that. And I think the same thing can be said for what Heath Webb is doing uh, in Lumpkin County. Um, Indians have struggled a little bit over the past couple years, but they're definitely taking a step in the right direction. And they've got some really young guys um, that, I mean, they're going to be region contenders in the next couple of years for sure. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, uh, Gilmer opens up at LFO. Uh, Lumpkin County hosts Riverside Military this week. Uh, I expect Gilmer to win, and, and I expect Lumpkin to win by whatever really they wanted to. They're, Lumpkin's playing that good right now, and uh, they, they carry a lot of momentum into the season. So uh, very excited for those uh, those programs. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, any other games you want to mention before we get into uh, the next segment? Yeah, you know, a game that, that, you know, we're not going to really talk about on the show, but a game to keep an eye on as far as, you know, uh, Ringgold Heritage is a big game in northwest Georgia. Um, that, that, that Both those teams are, are very good football teams. That, that's, that's going to have a lot. That game will tell a lot about how both those teams' seasons will go. Um, just run down here. Obviously, all the Corky Kell games are interesting. Uh, Jackson yeah. County traveling to Dawson. Uh, you know, yeah. Dawson County Coach Maxwell's been there for, forever and has built such a great uh, program there. Uh, we're not going to talk a lot about that game this week, but that's definitely a game to keep an eye on. And, and listen, Dawson County isn't going away either. Uh, they're, 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 I, I think they got a shot to win the region. I, you know, Wesleyan coming into that region is going to be interesting. Pickens dropping down the region 7 AAA. So that, that region is definitely going to be uh, fun to watch this season with Gilmer, Lumpkin, White County as well in that region. Yeah, and I think you said White County's got North Hall uh, this Friday night at, at home. Um, that's that region just as a whole. is There's so many unknowns, I think, just looking at it before the season gets started. Uh, what's Pickens going to look like? What's Wesleyan going to look like? And will um, I mean, will Dawson take a step back? Will White County take a step back? So it's going to be fun to see how that plays out. Yeah, and I fully expect Gilmer and Lumpkin to take steps forward. I, I do, so that's going to be very fun to see how that region uh, shakes out. But, uh, Jake, I think we're going to take a uh, – actually, we're going to roll right into our next segment, I believe, with Fanning County and Union County. Uh, this is the uh, 31st edition of the Border War, and th there it is right there. Uh, our good friend uh, and stranger Chris Mathis now joins the show. And, and a huge surprise is Chris Mathis. The Chris Mathis joins the show. Uh, we can't talk about uh, Fanning County, Union County without Chris. Uh, if you want to know who Chris is, Chris has been a longtime friend of Team FY and Sports, the Friday Night Press Box. He's hosted this show. He's been a guest on this show. He's He's been a part of this show since its inception. Uh, Chris has now moved up to Tampa Bay uh, to chase his dream, and we're so uh, happy for him and excited for him. But it's football season, and we can't start this podcast and this show off without Chris. So what fitting way? It's Fan and Union. Uh, it's Chris Mathis. Chris, how the heck are you? Dude, I'm doing great. First and foremost, thanks for having me back on. Even though I'm out of the area, it means a lot that you guys still thought of me. And uh, truly, this podcast has done a lot for me as well, and my personal life and my career as well, and building these relationships with you, Tim, and everybody else there. You guys have done a phenomenal job. Since day one, the inception, as you said a few minutes ago to now, this has come a long way. And, and you guys were doing great work from the very get-go in terms of covering so many different schools. But now you guys are just killing in all aspects that you possibly can. And uh, I tell you what, I'm super excited to uh, be talking some Fanning County Rebel, Union County Panther football with you right here on the show. And, uh, I mean, this is one of the classic rivals up North Georgia Again, as you mentioned, I'm a graduate of Union County High School. I've been following these two teams for years, and I used to go to the games. At one point, I reported on the games. Now I'm able to come to Blairsville on Friday night for this game and 
I'm just super excited, and I, I like where both programs are at right now. Obviously, Chad Cheatham at Fannin County has done a great job the last, I guess, four or five seasons there at Fannin County. And then Michael Perry entering year two as head coach of the Union County Panthers. And I like what he's done so far with the program as well. Uh, really generating a crazy offense, in my opinion. And we'll see how things look on Friday night there in Blairsville. It's going to be a fun time. It's the 31st meeting of the Border War. They're all tied at 15. But before we kind of dive into that, uh, Chris, this video has almost went viral. It's, it's such a great video. You were a part of it. And I'm actually going to play this uh, video as a uh, – it's a great video and a tribute to Union County football and uh, the town of Blairsville. Welcome to Union County, my home, your home, and this is our house. From the mountaintops of Blood of Brass Town to the valleys carved out by the Napi River, our home was founded and built from blood, sweat, and tears. Our dreams were born from hard work, passion, and the pursuit of excellence. Located 2,039 feet above sea level, stands the epicenter of all of Union County, where our past connects with the future. Our traditions are handed down from generation to generation. And our Panther pride and spirit is felt throughout the community. From young to old, we see that hard work, determination, and love for each other sustains us, creating a common bond that was molded and formed by our core values instilled in us. We represent our parents, grandparents, neighbors, our town, this county, and our state. When you visit these mountains, realize they don't define us, they made us, it's who we are, and we are proud of it. We are mountain made, we are Union County. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's, it gives me chills, too. Even if it was somebody else narrating it, truly, like, I don't know, even, uh, I feel like those that aren't from Union or could care less about the Panthers or North Georgia, I think if you just take the heart out of it and you just, you know, dial in as neutral in between, I think that you could enjoy that video. So that was special to me, especially since I made my move down to Tampa to have them reach out to me and want me to do that as an alumni of Union County. It meant so much. So just like being on here with you as, as always, Tim, but super cool. And I was very proud of that one. Yeah, a great, great video. And as as somebody who's from Fan County, who's playing Union County tomorrow, it's awesome. It's, I appreciate it, it. It's an awesome video. It's an awesome. A lot video. of that goes out to Paul McBride and Isaac Pugh. All I did was they sent me a script and I read it. So don't get it twisted. I, I didn't do too much of that. Shout, out, uh, to, shout out to Pugh and McBride. They they done a great job. Hey, let's let's talk football. Let's talk football. Uh, you're coming to town, so I'm excited. I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing you. Um, but, you know, what have you kind of heard from Union County this offseason? Yeah, no doubt. They're entering year two of the Michael Perry head coach era. Of course, Thomas Nelson there, defensive coordinator. Uh, they lost some players last year. Logan Helcher, a graduate. They lost most of their secondary and Eli Pugh graduating. Of course, a guy in uh, other DB that was super good as well. Trace Wright graduated. 
and then lost some guys up front as well in the offense and defensive line. So they have a young group coming in. Caden Tanner, the quarterback, uh, he's going to get his first career start on Friday night against the Fannin County Rebels. I like what he's done so far. I liked what he did last year. Last year, he subbed in as a wide receiver and a running back as well when they needed him to. And he was a sophomore last year. Most people thought, hey, what can this kid do? He's a quarterback, a backup quarterback, playing receiver and running back. And he stepped right in his first game. He had two catches, two touchdowns. And the rest of the year, he was very, uh, I would say, dominant in terms of his role and helping contribute to the team. But uh, this is a young team in Union County. I'm, I'm a little bit curious to see how their receiver core works out. They do have much smaller receivers than they did last year. Last year, Keaton Chitwood was that big wide receiver, number one. Uh, Trace nice. Wright played some receiver as well. Now Griffin Young returns. He's going to be a big part of that Panther offense. But the running back core there in Blairsville, that's what impresses me the most. From what I've heard, that running back core for the Panthers is going to be pretty good. They've got four or five guys that they're very confident in that can take snaps at any given time. And uh, two or three of those five guys, four or five guys, can do different things. And there's some of them that do a combo of everything. So uh, my big question coming in is what will the quarterback play look like without having a scrimmage last week? And also, what's the defense going to look like? They lost some key pieces in the secondary due to graduation last year. What will they do defensively? And Thomas Nelson, he's going to probably have to make some key adjustments this season in order to work with that roster they have. And – and from the fan side, you know, it's 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 kind of a there's no there's no Seth Reese. So everybody's saying who who's the quarterback, you know. And I don't even know if Chad Cheatham's even ready to make that decision. I know that he had uh, the Davenport and Weaver played last uh, Friday night at quarterback. But for Fannie County, it's all about defense. Uh, they return almost all their starters on defense. Um, Kate Sands is going to be playing uh, at linebacker. Um, don't know yet about uh, a Andrew Waldrop. He, he's been with an injury bug, uh, but uh, you've got you've got Nate Maluth on the defensive line, Jeremy Tam in the secondary with Carson Collis, uh, Bryson Holloway, Logan Long also on the defensive line. Uh, you know those guys return, and it's it's a very good defense. Uh, they offensively they've still got weapons too. Most of those guys we mentioned are going to play on on offense as well. So. Uh, you know, it's it's small it's small town football, and just like Union County, those guys are, are going to play both ways as well. So, it may come down to who, which team is in more con, is the most conditioned team. This is a rivalry game, Chris, and we've me and you both been a part of this game all of our lives. We've seen a lot of instant classics. Anything can happen when these two when these two schools get together. Yeah, no doubt. And as always, in a rival matchup like this one, first game of the regular season for both programs, the crowd can truly play an impact. In certain situations of this game, obviously, Fannin County, they travel well. The fan and faithful, as I've always liked to call them, they travel very well. And then the Blairsville fans will be out as well uh, there for the Union County Panthers. It's going to be exciting. And as crazy as this sounds, whether I think one team is much better than the other at this point in the season, we'll have to see by week seven or eight. But I think this is going to be one of those games where it comes down to one or, one or two key defensive turnovers and maybe one that leads to a touchdown. I think this is a much closer game than last year. Last year was 34-7. to seven. I think this year might be a little bit closer than 34-7. to seven. I'm thinking maybe like a 24-14, 24-10 to type ball game in week one of the season. Yeah, it, it's going to be a great – it's going to be a great – the atmosphere at Mike Caldwell tomorrow night is going to be incredible. There, there won't be an empty seat on the home side or the visiting side, Chris. And if there is, I'm taking it up, baby, because I am back in town. I'm excited. Uh, I'll steal that seat. So you guys that are tuned in right now and aren't sure of which local game to go to, go to this game, 100%. Two great rivalry programs with a lot of respect for one another, even though Union used to beat up on Fannin County quite some time. For middle 2010s, Union owned Fannin County. And then as of recent, yeah, Fannin yeah. County has flipped the switch. And now Fannin County looks at Union County as – an easy win, per se. So we'll see how things pan out. And again, the weather could also play an impact in this too, Tim. The last I checked the forecast, there was some rain in the forecast as well. Yeah, and it seems like every day at 3 o'clock it rains in Blue Ridge. So uh, it'll, it'll be interesting. Real quick, favorite moment of the rivalry, Chris? I, I'll start first. Uh, two, two, two plays come to mind. Uh, number one um, is uh, back when I was in high school, Josh Postel. Uh, he, we, we were trailing almost going into halftime 
And uh, he he got through on special teams and put his hands up, and he didn't block the punt. He caught the punt and ran it in. And uh, we ended up blowing uh, – not blowing out Union, but in the second half we, we, we extended our lead and won the game. That was a big moment for, for me. And then just two years ago, the last time the Rebels were at Mike Caldwell Memorial uh, Stadium, uh, Case and Owensby with the interception to break the streak. The Union had won so many years over Fannin. And that was a that was a fun uh, fun play for me. That that's two mem- memories that stick out to me. Yeah, no doubt. I think the memory that stands out to me, and this is going to be kind of cliche, Tim. So don't come at me. But as a student at Union County, I think 2015, uh, my junior year, they played in Blue Ridge. 2014 or 15, my sophomore or junior year, it was a game in Blue Ridge, and uh, I, I don't think the game was a great game per se, but. The crowd environment was awesome, even as a visiting fan for Union County. And I remember I'm sitting there with my buddy, Will Ball, and uh, the cheerleaders were throwing footballs up into the stands. And I've always been a diehard football guy. And I caught a football, and I was going crazy, and all the kids in my student section were going crazy after I caught the ball, and I threw my water bottle down. That I think that's my favorite moment. That's something that stands out to me. And there have been countless plays over the years. I can't really pinpoint one uh, that stands out to me other than Seth Reese's stiff arm last year. Down the sideline, just, oh, man, that hurt me up in the press box. <laughs> hey, there's always something that happens. Uh, this is a rivalry game. Uh, Chris, I can't wait. I, I can't wait to see you. It's going to be good good, good seeing you on uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, no um, doubt. Football season's here, man. Football Let's season's go. here. And, and just for me personally speaking, and I think I speak on behalf of the Blue Ridge community and the Blairsville community, we're also happy for you, man. We're pulling for you and your career I appreciate uh, down there in Tampa Bay. Don't give up, man. Keep chasing the dream. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And again, as I told you last week on the phone, it wouldn't be possible without people like you. As I said, you motivated me in your own way without even trying to create a podcast. And since I made the podcast, the Chris Mathis podcast, things happened. It, it was just wild. So I yeah, appreciate it. Uh, our, our sports director here deserves a lot of, uh, you know, it's it's not, it's not Jake me. West. Jake, Jake West, too. He deserves some credit, too. He's absolutely. I don't deserve any credit, Chris. You do it on your own. No, no, Jake Tim. West, right, man. I'll sports see you. for giving us this platform. Uh, man, and, and, and BKP, you know, thank you guys for giving us the platform just to get on here and talk football. We love no it. No doubt, man. I'll see you Friday night. I'm going to wear a Tampa Bay Rays hat because I think it's going to rain. My hair isn't crazy good looking whenever it gets rained on, so I'm going to put on a hat. I'll see you there, brother, before kickoff. Hey, it's going to be a great time. Uh, stick around. Thanks, for Chris, for going to stick around. We're going to be joined by Drew Harris from 939, the voice of the White County Warriors. He's going to preview White County and North Hall for us. B&M Metals has been serving the Southeast for almost 50 years. From metal roofs and panels to gutters and metal accessories, B&M Metals is your one-stop shop for all things metal. They pride themselves on providing great service and quality at a competitive price. Give B&M Metals a call at 706-864-6068 or visit them at 6195 Highway 52 East in Murrayville or at bmmetalroofing.com. B&M Metals, protecting everything that matters to you most. The Red Tag Sale is back. Uh, who's that guy? His name is Red Tag. He's here to save some green. He's slashing prices left and right for the home of your dreams. Save thousands on select in stock homes, that's what we say. If you want to save some green, just look for the man in red. My name is Gary. Don't. Save thousands on select homes at the Red Tag Sale. At Circuit World, we offer a wide selection of major appliances, name brands like Whirlpool, LG, Frigidaire, and more. Looking for furniture? Come by and browse our showroom or check out the Endless Aisle, a touchscreen kiosk with thousands of options. Need electronics? Gaming computers, laptops, desktops, tablets, we have it all. OLED or QLED, 4K or high def, we have the selection to get you the TV of your dreams. And don't forget, at Circuit World, your credit is always good. So ask about our convenient payment options and 120 days, same as cash. Come see us today at one of our five Five area locations. The wait times are shorter, so get to Days and pre-order your new Chevy today. Days Chevrolet in Jasper is your pre-order headquarters. If Chevy builds it, we can reserve your slice of happiness right now. And as soon as your new Chevy rolls off that truck, we'll deliver it right to you. So get it done. Pre-order your new Chevy today at Days Chevrolet in Jasper. Days Chevrolet. 
find new roads. Are you looking for expertly decorated gifts you'll love with your custom designer logo? Graphic Expressions in Blue Ridge is your go-to place for custom apparel, accessories, gifts, and much more. Graphic Expressions is located at 3640 East 1st Street in Blue Ridge, or give them a call at 706-946-4605. Graphic Expressions, unrivaled customer service, pure brand awesomeness. In 1981, Reed Nicholson began selling tires out of an old barn in Mineral Bluff. Little did he know that he had just laid the groundwork for the most trusted names in automotive services in the Blue Ridge area. In 1997, Nicholson Tire Center became what it is today, holding the same values of faith, family, and great customer service. Two locations to serve you, and the Blue Ridge location is currently expanding to offer fast service and the largest U-Haul provider in Georgia. Nicholson Tire Center, Blue Ridge, and Mineral Bluff. North Georgia Metals has been serving the Southeast for over 40 years. From metal roofs and panels to gutters and metal accessories, North Georgia Metals is your one-stop shop for all things metal. Give the team at North Georgia Metals a call at 706-276-1633 or visit them at 15544 Highway 515 South in LJ or on the web at NorthGeorgiaMetals.com. Pleased to be joined at this time by Drew Harris. He's 93.9, the voice of the White County Warriors. Uh, Drew, you're going to be on the call uh, tomorrow night for North Hall and White County, but uh, thank you for coming in. I know you're excited about football season just like I am. Oh, absolutely. Love to love to get it kick, kicked off. And, you know, this little bit of a, I won't say cold spell, but cooler spell for this time of year has definitely made me ready for it. Oh yeah, uh, the evenings and mornings have, been, have 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 felt great. Uh, we just hope the hope there's no rain. On that's Friday. right. That, that's we right. Want, we do not want any any rain. Uh, big big time football game in Cleveland uh, tomorrow. Uh, North Hall and White County. Uh, North Hall leads the series twenty five to twenty four. Uh, White County's got a new coach in Chad Bennett. North Hall's got a new coach in Sean Pender. You know, uh, what's some of your uh, initial thoughts on the game? And what a what a way to kick off the season, you know it. Um, you know the rivalry. It's always been a big rivalry. It's a little weird when they're not in a region together, which has happened uh, one other time the last few decades for for a two to four year stretch. But um, you've got uh, two two teams with two new coaches. Wine County not really going through the major overhaul offensively like North Hall is with uh, just a complete change in style. It's going to be weird seeing North Hall not in a wing T or wish right. or, or some kind of uh, option formation. They're going to be running the spread. That's what Coach Pender likes to do. But on Wine County's side, uh, Coach Bennett is, is no stranger. He was the offensive coordinator here for four years uh, up until last year. He, he went to Gainesville last year where he uh, played uh, and was the OC there for, for one year before getting the head job up here. So um, big storyline, White County's got a brand new turf field they just put in during the off season. It looks terrific. Uh, Going to be the first game on that. They've got a nice, huge new LED scoreboard uh, in, the, in the corner over there, and it looks phenomenal. And so they're going to be breaking that in tomorrow night. Uh, with um, <clears throat> with with a big rivalry game, going to be a huge crowd on hand, and a lot of unknowns for for both teams. Really, Wine County going to be bringing out some uh, not necessarily new style offensively or defensively, but a lot of new names. And uh, of course, as I said, with North Hall, just a, a complete overhaul in style. So a lot going on in Cleveland tomorrow night that uh, we're all uh, ready to get going. Yeah, it looks like I was there this summer. It looks like there's a lot of other construction going around yeah. 
uh, the whole the whole complex there. So it's great to see that uh, the White County School is putting in money into the facilities for kids. Absolutely, there a uh, whole new baseball softball complex going on where um, where you probably saw that dirt and stuff being moved. Uh, the new fields over there, the baseball field and all that's going to be. Um, Sorry about that. Is going to be a um, uh, a turf as well, uh, except the the only thing that'll be there will be the pitcher's mound. So, going to have nice wraparound stands and and all that. So it's uh, a lot of a lot of things. I think there's some updates planned for for the gym gymnasium as well. So, the uh, the athletic program getting some new digs, and it's a uh, great to see. I think there's a new performing arts center going to go up where the baseball field is. So a lot of money being spent, but it's going to look phenomenal when it's all done. That's great. Drew, if you don't care, kind of dive into the game a little bit more. Tell, talk about some of the players to watch for tomorrow night. So, Wine County uh, will be trotting out a sophomore quarterback. We saw him start several games um, last year, Trip Nix. He was pushed in the offseason by a, a freshman quarterback who will probably play some. He's a very good athlete in Braxton Anderson. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to see those two guys take some snaps at quarterback for White County. Um, offensively, they're going to be running, uh, you know, a spread look with with wide receivers for probably four wide receivers uh, each uh, each snap. You're going to have guys like Colton Turner, Kane Lowry, Nate Bray, uh, Cam Wilson, and um, Case and Duval, guys like that. And then uh, probably the uh, the main feature in the offense uh, that, that we've seen through the spring and, and then the, during the scrimmage game is, is Ryan Fowler. Um, he's uh, going to be playing some running back, probably going to split out some, just a very quick, um, hard-nosed football player. And uh, White County will try to get him the ball in as many touches as possible uh, tomorrow. And I assume every game, but starting tomorrow night. Now, North Hall on the flip side, uh, the one guy that uh, I do remember from last year that I, that I know, no matter what kind of offense they're going to be, running that he'll have the football a good bit and that's aj jones who's a just a phenomenal athlete himself and so i uh, got two similar athletes they're going to go at it for white county and north hall and uh, going to be interesting to see the first few drives for north hall um you know trying to drop back uh with uh with a revamp style in years past their offensive line hasn't been i guess what you would say a pass protection because they haven't needed to be. And, and so it's hard to know, um, you know, with, with an off season, I imagine that they've worked on that, but to see if Wayne County puts pressure on them early to see if they can protect in a, you know, passing situation, obvious passing situations and stuff like that. So um, Wayne County going to probably have the quarterback run a little bit more than maybe we saw last year. Both defenses are going to be running kind of a three, three, five stack look with with some different names out there a lot of guys probably going both ways uh, for both teams and the cooler nights probably going to make both coaches happy from that aspect because these early games are usually very hot and usually it's tough to get guys that go both ways to, to play all four quarters without uh, falling out to fatigue or cramps Absolutely, Drew. It's going to look very different. You know, Coach Bishop and even back when Coach Christmas was the coach at North Hall, you know, it, it was the wing tee, you know. So yeah. it's going to be very interesting to see the spread offense that, you know, Coach Pender is bringing. Uh, real quick, we're about to come up on uh, our next segment here, but uh, tell everybody how they can listen uh, to the White County uh, North Hall game with you on the call. Sure. We're, we're on WRWH 93.9 and AM 1350 in Cleveland. Uh, online at wrwh.com, uh, smartphone with the TuneIn radio app, and just type in wrwh. We, we stream live there. We go on the air at six o'clock with a tailgate show. We uh, we have a segment where we preview games, kind of like what you guys do here, and we have a uh, highlight segment from the week before. We play highlights from the week before. We're adding a new wrinkle this year with the UGA report. I'm going to have Scott Howard on voice of the Georgia Bulldogs so our show tomorrow night. So he'll be on there. We'll play that again at halftime. And then during the, our pregame show, starting at 7, we, we talked with Coach Bennett uh, for a few segments uh, for the, the, the head coach for White County. We talked to him before we lead up to kickoff. So uh, we have some special halftime guests too. So a lot of uh, – we had added a few wrinkles to the broadcast this year. Thought uh, thought we might change a few things up and get uh, more people involved and, 
and things that people like and want to hear. So we're looking forward to that. Well, Drew, you, you won up to everybody by getting Scott Howard. What, what a, <laughs> yeah, that, that, I, that's impressive. He's, uh, he's, he's great. He's always willing to help out. So uh, really good guy. And we're looking forward to, to hearing from him. That's uh, Drew Harris with 93.9, The Voice of White County Warriors. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned. Next, we're going to uh, be joined by Seth Kane with Gratic Sports. As uh, Seth Kane, he'll, he'll be on the call for Harrelson and Raven County uh, down in Harrelson this week. So stay tuned as we go uh, to talk to Seth Kane and Harrelson and Raven. Pleased to be joined by Seth Kane. Uh, Seth's become a good friend of mine. He's no stranger to uh, the Friday Night Press Box and now the new name, the North Georgia Kickoff Show. He's been on several times. Uh, he's with Gratic Sports. Seth is going to be on the call tomorrow for uh, Raven County and Harrelson. Seth, football season's here. I know you're just excited as I am. You know, Tim, I since about, I would say, probably about early to mid-July, I've been uh, chomping at the bit, ready to get back to the football stadium. I've uh, been ready to get behind the microphone again uh, to call another football game. And uh, it's finally here. And uh, it it's it's just been a great week. It's been crunch week, trying to get everything prepared and ready. And uh, I'm just excited high school football is finally back. It's here. And Seth, you got one of the best uh, games in the state, especially in the, in the, in the with Harrelson County and Raven. Raven, of course, visiting Harrelson County. Uh, you're going to be on the call. Uh, first of all, how's things looking at Harrelson County? You know, things are looking really well at Harrelson County. Uh, you, you can, if you want to try to compare teams, which is, it's kind of hard to do. Uh, Harrelson County did graduate uh, a lot of size last year. Uh, many of those players have either gone on either just to graduation, some are going off to play in college. Uh, if you remember last year, Clay Hyatt, one of the top players in the state, uh, he's now going to be playing. Uh, the last I talked to uh, David Dean, the head football coach of West Georgia, he's going to be playing fullback there. And I think he might be playing some of the defense too. Uh, not 100% sure on that, but I know for sure he's going to be in the fullback spot uh, for West Georgia uh, over the next few years. I think he might even get a start this year, but uh, I won't know that for sure until I uh, interview David Dean here within the next couple of weeks before West Georgia season gets kicked off. Uh, so he's so a lot of size uh, left uh, because of graduation, but the players that still remain and that have moved up into the varsity spots and into the starting positions, uh, they still are going to be packing a punch uh, on both sides of the ball on the offensive and defensive lines. Uh, they are still, they got some good size to them. They got some great strength to them. And uh, they were actually holding their own pretty well for a little bit against Villarica in the scrimmage game uh, last Friday night in, in Villarica. So uh, there's, there's still a lot to, a lot to be seen. And, uh, but I think Harrelson County, they've, uh, they're going to have a strong team again this year. And uh, I know it's going to be a big dog fight in, in region seven double a with, uh, Rock Mart with Fanning County because we've got three defending region champions uh, in the region this year. And, and North Murray, uh, you know, with that passing attack, uh, oh, Region yeah. 7 AA, uh, Fanning County head coach Chad Cheatham calls it the SEC of AA. And I, I oh, agree true, with that. Yeah. It's uh, and models models on the rise in, in Gordon Central mm -hmm. Murray. Murray's got a new, new head coach uh, with Kurt Napier. Uh, that name doesn't need no introduction. Uh, the nope. Napier family coached off for years at Murray County. Kirk's brother, Billy, uh, the yep. head football coach down at Gainesville for that team they call the Florida Gators. Uh, so great coach league First in Region 7 double Maybe the best coach region uh, in all of GHSA. Oh, I would say so, absolutely, because you've got the experience with Scott Peavy, with Chad Cheatham, uh, with uh, Na uh, Coach Napier there at Murray County, and Preston Pogue at North Murray, and the list just goes on and on. So, yeah, this region, and, uh, well, Biff Parson at Rockmart. You know, yeah. Not him. We can't forget about Rockmart. No. You know, I was, I was looking at Rockmart's uh, uh, records from the last few years. Um, They've had some really good seasons the last few years, but if you go back to the 2018 season when they went 14 and one and they lost to Heard County in the state championship game there in Atlanta, um, that's that just is the testament to what kind of talent that's been coming out of Rockmart and what Biff Parson has been doing, and that's a testament to his his coaching style. And so that's that's why to be I think Rockmart's going to be one of the tough teams to beat in Region Seven AA this year. Oh, absolutely, maybe in the whole state. I, oh, absolutely, yeah. I, they, I'm they going on record. I a run. I I think they actually pull the upset tomorrow night against Cedar Town. Oh, I absolutely, really, yeah, one hundred percent. I think uh, 
I think definitely that Rockmart they'll uh, they'll go in and just take care of Cedartown because um, Cedartown's had some great talent, you know, over the last last few years as well. But Rockmart they've been the top dog, so to speak, in in Polk County. Ab absolutely, uh, Seth, uh, you're, you're going to be on the call uh, with Greg Sports. Is uh, Ken still with you tomorrow? Yeah, Ken Walker's going to be with me tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to be there uh, amongst the crowd at Taylor Memorial Stadium. And uh, this is going to be a, a great home opener because we know uh, the uh, the entire Harrelson County community, they're getting excited about it. They are uh, just... I'm glad, you, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I, want, yeah. I want to talk to you about that. The Harrelson County fan base, I've been hearing a lot of great things about them. They mm -hmm. come... They come out and they support a lot big crowds in Harrelson County. Oh, it's it's they're huge. I mean, I cannot tell you the last time I have seen that stadium with just hardly any people in it. I mean, it's it's been that long ago. Uh, yeah, Harrelson County has uh, had for many years has just had not had some so great seasons. Uh, but over the last few years, within the last five years, I would say. Uh, the season's just been wonderful. Uh, Coach PV has taken the culture and has completely flipped it around. And you are seeing everybody getting behind this Harrelson County, these Harrelson County teams over the past few years. So they show out in droves. Uh, they they come, they fill up the home side. Sometimes it becomes standing room only. Uh, the Cowbells are out in full force. That's one of the biggest things there in Harrelson County. And um, I know when we come up to uh, – uh, to Fanning County, to North Murray, well, they're going to be traveling. Uh, Harrelson County, when it came to traveling last year, the last couple of years, even during uh, uh, the, the pandemic and the COVID-19 stuff, that they still traveled. They still showed up. They were out in full force. They brought the cowbells. They brought their voices and and a lot of their support. So it's, it's truly, I would say, one of the best. You know, I know I may be a little bit biased here, but uh, truly one of the best or the best fan base, I would say, uh, in at least this half of the state of Georgia, if not this entire state of Georgia. Yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to uh, the 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 Fannin Rebels and the Harrelson Rebels when they play. Yeah, um, you know, it's uh, I guess for the right to be called the Rebels though. Who, oh, who yeah. the real Rebels of Region Seven AA? It's going to be fun. Yeah. But hey, big game this week with Raven Raven County visiting Harrelson. Tell us uh, how everybody can listen to you and uh, and follow along. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're going to get started uh, this Friday night. You can listen to Harrelson County, Raven County on uh, WKNG, uh, FM 93.7, AM 1060, if you're in the West Georgia area. Uh, but if you're not in the West Georgia area, you can listen online at WKNG.com or on the WKNG app. And you can actually download. We have a section on our website where you can download the WKNG app. And uh, whether you have an iPhone or an Android, so you can download it and listen to the game that way. We do encourage people to uh, turn on the notifications on the apps too, because just like you would see on your ESPN app or your CBS Sports app, whatever, we're going to be sending out score updates, not only from that game, but we're going to update other games as well. Uh, because uh, we have five broadcasts this year. We added a fifth station uh, in in our broadcast lineup on the Gratic Sports Radio Network because uh, we have six companies, our six stations uh, within our company at Granite Communications. Uh, so we added in a fifth station this year. So uh, we're going to be sending out notifications of score updates to the games uh, that are going to be on uh, those apps and as well as other games in the area that we're not broadcasting uh, each particular week. Seth, thank you for joining us. And uh, this probably won't be the first time we, we, we hear from you this year. Hope to have you on as much as you can. Uh, best of luck to Harrelson County this week. Well, Tim, thanks so much for having me on. Look forward to being on more this season. We're going to take a quick commercial break. After the break, we'll return with North uh, Murray and Dalton preview. This will be the first time these schools meet. And Chris Napier of Team FYN Sports will join us. B&M Metals has been serving the Southeast for almost 50 years. From metal roofs and panels to gutters and metal accessories, B&M Metals is your one-stop shop for all things metal. They pride themselves on providing great service and quality at a competitive price. Give B&M Metals a call at 706-864-6068 or visit them at 6195 Highway 52 East in Murrayville or at bmmetalroofing.com. B&M Metals, protecting everything that matters to you most. The Red Tag Sale is back. Uh, who's that guy? His name is Red Tag. He's here to save some green. He's slashing prices left and right for the home of your dreams. Save thousands. 
thousands on select in stock homes, that's what we say. If you want to save some green, just look for the man in red. My name is Gary. Don't. Save thousands on select homes at the Red Tag Sale. At Circuit World, we offer a wide selection of major appliances, name brands like Whirlpool, LG, Frigidaire, and more. Looking for furniture? Come by and browse our showroom or check out the Endless Aisle, a touchscreen kiosk with thousands of options. Need electronics? Gaming computers, laptops, desktops, tablets, we have it all. OLED or QLED, 4K or high def, we have the selection to get you the TV of your dreams. And don't forget, at Circuit World, your credit is always good. So ask about our convenient payment options and 120 days, same as cash. Come see us today at one of our Five area locations. Hey Chevrolet, please get it done. The wait times are shorter, so get to Days and pre order your new Chevy today. Days Chevrolet in Jasper is your pre order headquarters. If Chevy builds it, we can reserve your slice of happiness right now. And as soon as your new Chevy rolls off that truck, we'll deliver it right to you. So get it done. Pre order your new Chevy today at Days Chevrolet in Jasper. Hey Chevrolet. Find new roads. Are you looking for expertly decorated gifts you'll love with your custom design or logo? Graphic Expressions in Blue Ridge is your go-to place for custom apparel, accessories, gifts, and much more. Graphic Expressions is located at 3640 East 1st Street in Blue Ridge, or give them a call at 706-946-4605. Graphic Expressions, unrivaled customer service, pure brand awesomeness. In 1981, Reed Nicholson began selling tires out of an old barn in Mineral Bluff. Little did he know that he had just laid the groundwork for the most trusted names in automotive services in the Blue Ridge area. In 1997, Nicholson Tire Center became what it is today, holding the same values of faith, family, and great customer service. Two locations to serve you, and the Blue Ridge location is currently expanding to offer fast service and the largest U-Haul provider in Georgia. Nicholson Tire Center, Blue Ridge, and Mineral Bluff. North Georgia Metals has been serving the Southeast for over 40 years. From metal roofs and panels to gutters and metal accessories, North Georgia Metals is your one-stop shop for all things metal. Give the team at North Georgia Metals a call at 706-276-1633 or visit them at 15544 Highway 515 South in LJ or on the web at NorthGeorgiaMetals.com. Like to welcome in Chris Napier. He's going to be covering North Murray and Dalton tomorrow. He's a big North Murray fan. Uh, Chris, uh, North Murray uh, coming into Region Seven AA this year. Uh, talk about you know what North Murray brings to the table. Uh, well, they're riding a, a six-year playoff streak here, uh, and they're looking to make it seven. Uh, they've got a high-powered offense. Uh, Seth Griffin leading the way. Uh, he's got some plenty of weapons, and most notably uh, Jaden Rice. Uh, both of these guys are. Uh, preseason All-State AA players, and uh, they are looking to lead this team back to the playoffs, and there's a lot of exci you know, excited fans around. Uh, there's a, a bunch of great players for this team this year, and I'm excited to see them. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun region to cover, but we've got all season to talk about that. But let's, let's talk about this game uh, tomorrow night, North Murray and Dalton. Uh, what does Murray this game mean to both schools? Uh, this is a big deal to a lot of folks around here. Uh, most folks remember Murray County and Dalton used, you know, it used to be the big, the place to be, the big game. Uh, there was the hottest ticket in town for many years. Uh, even though Dalton held a considerable advantage in this, uh, the rival, you know, between the two schools, uh, 44 to nine. Uh, but a lot of folks just 
wish it could go back to those uh, late 80s, 90s, all the way through 2000, when that the rivalry was at its peak. I think they split uh, a lot of games there, and I think there's a there's probably still a lot of folks walking around this area with waiting on bruises to heal from those games, even though they were 30 some years ago. Uh, so, you know, all this happened before North Murray uh, even was thought of. Uh, you know, populations uh, centers will change and move, and and Murray County now has two schools, uh, and so. Uh, the rivalry uh, between Murray County and Dalton, it kind of went away over the years, uh, but people still want it. There's still a competitive spirit uh, between uh, Murray County folks and Whitfield County folks. And so this is a game that's wanted by a lot of people. Uh, I'm one of them. Uh, so, so in those years of change, this is, this is where we are now. This is new. Uh, and some people uh, don't think of it as uh you know, as, as same as the old days, but I think it can be. And I think this is going to be a great matchup. I think this is going to be the hottest ticket in town. I, I hope a lot of people are there. Uh, you know, the, even though North Murray is young, uh, they just come around in 2009. Uh, there's a lot of ties here uh, that most people don't realize. There's a lot of people that wore that red and white uh, as a catamount that now have kids or grandkids that wear the black and gold as a mountaineer. So there's a lot of emotions involved here. Um, I think it's going to be exciting. Um, so I think it's going to be a great thing for our area, uh, the, the schools and the programs and all the people involved. Absolutely, Chris. I, I know that's going to be an exciting game. Uh, can you talk about Dalton a little bit? Uh, Dalton, you're going to see a guy named Tyson Greenwade. Uh, this guy is, is an exceptional athlete. Uh, he's going to be uh, the focus of that Dalton offense. Uh, much uh, the, the way that uh, Jameer Gibbs was in 2019. Uh, he really carried the team there. And this is a team that's wanting to get back to the playoffs. They've struggled the past couple of years. Uh, they're going to have a new quarterback. Uh, there are several options. Parker McClurg is one of those guys. He's a big framed quarterback, a big six foot four uh, kid with a big arm. So that can make a, a dynamic offense right there, a dynamic duo between McClurg and, and Greenway. Uh, also, you got a, a guy named Jefferson Locke. Uh, he's a great outside linebacker. Uh, that that will uh, definitely help that Dalton defense if they're looking to get back into the playoffs. Absolutely. Chris, you know, we're, we're, we've, we've talked about it all the offseason. We're so excited the season's here. Uh, what are some other games you're kind of looking forward to tomorrow night? Well, another – uh, Murray versus Whitfield County game is going on tomorrow. Murray County and Kurt Napier will be taking on the Colts from Kohala Creek. Uh, so a lot of people are expecting uh, a big seasons from both of these schools, uh, you know, with Murray County and uh, the revamped attitude and, and excitement over here with the new coaching staff and some of the changes. And then Kohala Creek with with just a great senior class that they've got put together and yeah. supporting junior class. Uh, there, I, myself included, there's a lot of folks that think this could be the year that we see the Colts go to the playoffs, and I think it could be. Yeah, of course, you, you picked that big upset uh, last season with Cahula Creek beating Northwest Whitfield on opening night, correct? Yes, that was uh, that was something. And, and when I got to that game that night, I, I did the show with you, and I said, hey, Colts are going to go win this one. And when I got to the uh, game that night, I saw the warm-ups. You know, the field's a little damp, which uh, played into the Colts' hand, hands that night. And then uh, I, I saw the warm-ups, and I saw the attitude from uh, Kohala Creek, and I was like, yep, this is going to happen. I picked wow. the right game to go to. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I was excited. And, uh, I, you know, they've got another one coming up, and I'm sure that uh, next week uh, Northwest uh, Whitfield will travel to Kohala Creek. I think that one's going to be huge also. We got about a minute left, Chris. Do you have any? Uh, you had you called a good upset last uh, last week, week one. You, you got a week one upset this week. Uh, week one upset. Uh, I don't know uh, how heavily favored Dalton is. But I really like this North Murray offense being able to just flat out put the points up. I know Dalton's a much larger school, but uh, this is a very talented offense. So if I had to pick it, up, well, I will pick an upset. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'll pick I'll pick an upset. I'm going to go North Murray over Dalton in a close one, a very high-scoring affair. 
Hey, r- real quick, do you care to give a Rock March Cedar Town prediction? I'm going to go with Rock March. I uh, I, I think it's going to be uh, one of the harder hitting rival games we see this year. But I'm going to go with uh, the Yellow Jackets in that one, and a close one. Chris, thank you for your time. I'm sure we'll probably talk to you next week. Uh, Chris is on Twitter. He's a great follow. Uh, just search his name, follow him on Twitter. Also, he does a lot of work in Northwest Georgia football, which us at Team FY and Sports connect with very well. So uh, interact with him on social media. It's going to be a fun season. Yep. I can't Chris, wait. Chris, thank you. Now we'll go to uh, – we're going to talk about with Tron and Gordon Lee with uh, Paul Cavan for Tron. All right, next we're joined by Team FYN Sports' is R.J. Casey and Northwest Georgia football Lawrence Morgan, man. Guys, it is here. Tomorrow night, it starts. I know I'm excited. I know you guys are as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, game, let's talk about Pickens. What, R.J.? Game's starting for real now. It's time, man. It's time. Hey, let's talk about Pickens and Sonorval. Um Team FYN Sports has got a graphic out. Two of the best tight ends in, in North Georgia going toe-to-toe in Isaiah Williams and Ridge Red. But there's a lot of other exciting players, uh, too, on both sides of the football. RJ, let's kind of start with you uh, and uh, kind of preview the Pickens Dragons going in. Yeah. Um, obviously, they had a, a scrimmage last week against uh, Rock Mart. Uh, I didn't – it may not have gone as well as uh, – the players and the coaches that wanted, but maybe maybe it did in a sense to maybe it, it woke them up like, hey, things getting real. It starts next week, and you need to uh, need to wake up and and uh, get things going. And uh, this week they're starting their uh, their three game road trip to start the year, uh, going to Sonoraville. First time they're going to Sonoraville since. Uh, um, 2012, first time going to Snorville since 2012. So it's been 10 years, almost to the day, the uh, the Dragons and the and the Phoenix have faced off at, in Snorville. Uh, Pickens has a, a 2-0 series advantage. Uh, not very many meetings uh, football-wise between these two, but uh, it I think it, it has a – Chance to be a good one if uh, Pickens can correct some things from the scrimmage and and uh, get get the ball rolling uh, early on uh, with an offense that's capable of doing some things. They've got uh, um, Sam Stryker back at quarterback. They've got, as you mentioned, Tim Isaiah Williams at tight end playing some H back as well. Uh, they've got Marcus Pike, who's a big uh, wide receiver target, six three, six four. Um, then they've got. Uh, some committee running backs at Miguel Salto and Caden Hampton and Mason Powell uh, running back there as well. So they've got they've got the guys uh, on offense. Um, I know Norville's got some good guys on on defense as well, and they've got some they've got some skill guys defensively. Um, Hampton, we saw when the Dragons faced Dalton in their spring scrimmage. Hampton was back in the in the free safety spot, and now he's shifted back up to his normal linebacker spot, where he's coming off of two straight uh, hundred tackle hundred tackle seasons. So he's going to be leading leading that defense. You've got Caleb Nicholson and Caleb Taylor, who are going to switch in both sides of the ball, offense and defense, uh, and. Hopefully they can get up on the get up on the right foot if you're a Dragon fan and and start this three game road trip off with a win. Absolutely, uh, Lawrence. Uh, more with Northwest Georgia football guys. If you haven't followed Northwest Georgia football on Twitter, I highly recommend. Nobody does it better in the, in the Southeast than promoting high school football. And Lawrence, Northwest Georgia football. Lawrence, uh, talk about us uh, in Norville uh, real quick. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. There's a lot of buzz coming into the season about Sonoraville. I mean, they barely missed the playoffs last year in six AAA. Um, got a lot of guys returning this season. I know a lot of people pick them to make the playoffs and in seven four A. Uh, Jackson Pate back leading the offense, quarterback junior, uh, dual threat kid can throw it, run it. Um, Zach Lyles, um, he got hurt in the last scrimmage game against Model, 
So I know the fans are curious to see if he's going to be there Friday night. But if not, they have a couple of guys, Wyatt Springfield, Wyatt Key in the backfield, Brant Bryant. Um, they'll still be strong. Uh, you know, and, and as good as our offense is, their defense is better to me. I mean, they held that model run game to probably less than 40 yards in the first half, created a couple of turnovers, a uh, very young uh, linebacking core with Mullins and Bradley and Ty Brown back there, um, all class of 24 guys, all, with, you know, 6'1", 200-pound guys. Um, I think it's going to be a real challenge for the Dragons, man, coming to Sonorville. Um, I know Cal Preps has Sonorville as a 13-point favorite. Um, I see that game playing out about that score. I see Sonorville winning by at least 13. Yeah, it should be a should be a fun uh, fun game there at the furnace, as they called it, Sonorville. Yeah, yeah um, hopefully it won't be too hot. <laughs> This segment's obviously going to end our show. So, guys, what are some other games you guys are looking forward to uh, as the uh, week one uh, starts? Yeah, I know. I know the, the the big game. You know, in the northwest Georgia, West Georgia area, has to be Rock Mart Cedar Town. I mean, Rock Mart Cedar Town is on everybody's watch list. Um, our, our RJ got to witness Rock Mart uh, firsthand last Friday night, so he knows what they're all about. Um, a lot of expectations in Cedartown with the Bulldogs. Polk County rivalry, always huge. Place is going to be packed out. Be um, I wouldn't be surprised if people weren't already standing in line out there. Um, to me, that's definitely the highlight of Friday night. And, of course, you got the Corky Kell at Barron Stadium, yep. uh, Rome versus Creekside. You know, got the number two team in 6A versus the number four team in 5A. It's going to be a shootout. Uh, a game I don't think is not getting much attention in the Northwest Georgia is, is uh, Ringo and Heritage. Yeah, that, that's gonna be a great yeah, game. I know, I know, the, I know, yeah, I know, I know the fans are Ringo. They um were upset that they didn't get to play last year. You know, they had a great team last year. Sent twelve guys off to college um, this summer. Um, Heritage is bringing back a huge senior class. It's gonna be a knockdown drag out. Absolutely, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with uh, Heritage over the years, as you guys know. I've gotten to see them plenty, and uh, they've always been a good, consistent team fighting for playoff spots and and uh, home playoff games and and this year will probably be no different in that region that that's a tough region I'm happy to see Pickens is out of it this year because that is that is a really tough region especially when you ask a team like Sonorville like we talked earlier Sonorville is just going to make that that region even that much tougher and you you've got five maybe six teams playing for four playoff spots in that region so Heritage, Heritage and Ringgold is a good one. As you as you mentioned, Cedartown and Rock Mart, that's a good one too. And it's a, it's a good first week of football for, for everybody. Absolutely. Guys, thank you all for joining us. And this definitely will not be the first time uh, we speak to you guys this season. Uh, this will conclude our uh, our first show of the season on, on the North Georgia kickoff show on Team FYN Sports. Tune in next week. We'll have some highlights, interviews, and we'll have some more guests. But – Everybody get out, enjoy some high school football this week. Absolutely. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Bye.